So now we're going to do the Reiki self healing protocol. I'm going to take my glasses off for this because I really like to nourish my eyes because especially when we're working with screens and our eyes are depleted from working, you know, at a computer, we really want to send this Reiki healing energy. And here's the great thing. You can do the self healing protocol every day. You could do it in the shower. It's incredibly easy and it just gives your hands somewhere to go as we do our medical intuitive body scan because you can apply all the things that we've done. Everything just builds on each other in this course that, okay, now it's time to put your hands somewhere and use your hands as the healing tools that they are. So there's a great acronym for um, remembering all of your steps of a, a Reiki healing session. There's seven steps to a Reiki healing session and it spells out the word healing. And I've given you that in your Reiki level one PDF. Healing space is cleared. Okay. That's the H. We have to do our spiritual hygiene. We have to clear, raise our vibration, stay away from things that make us feel bad, do our grounding work so that we're really in our body so that we can do this from a healthy way. And so that's H, healing space is cleared. E, ease the client. In that case, the client is us. So where, where are you feeling tension? Let that go because energy is not going to flow through any areas of your body that are constricted or tight or anywhere that you're feeling not open and flowing. Move around, do your movement, do your exercise before you participate in your own self-healing energy work. So that was H and E. And then we have A, activate, ask, and scan. Activate the palm chakras. These are your greatest healing tools when doing Reiki. Like I always tell you guys, my hands are like the exclamation points of my mind and my intention. My hands carry out the work that I visualize and that I connect in with. We've activated our palm chakras. Activate, ask, and scan. So then we could, if we were using our own tactile sense on ourself, we could definitely scan the field or we could do that internally, visually, and see... Okay, where needs more attention today? Just take a minute and tune in with that. Hmm, I definitely feel like I always need more in the eye area. So I've activated the palm chakras and then we lay on hands, that's the L, okay? So we've gone to heal, H-E-A-L, lay on hands. I, invoke prayer. That's when we really set our intention and call in our spirit guides and call in our healing team in need to breathe. Yep. Got to breathe to be effective at doing this. Remember that and find a breathwork practice that really works for you. It's just going to make you better at doing Reiki. And then G is grounding. So when we're done, we really want to make sure that we're still grounded and that we didn't woo leave our body because it started to feel good. So let's do it. Let's do it together. We begin at the very top of the head. The traditional hand position is going to be middle fingers together. Now, what I wanna call your attention to is if you're here and this all feels tight, like if your shoulders aren't comfy with that, I want you to find what works right to access the crown, okay? Because if you need to stay there for a while, it may just need to be palm chakra to the crown instead of both fingertips and you're encircling like the top of the head. You have to find out what feels right to you because here's another thing, your hand size and the body part size that you're working on, that's going to have a big bearing on how you have to modify, adjust and adapt. So this is the traditional first position here. And then we go to the back of the head. So we're getting that rear aspect of the sixth chakra. Once again, middle fingers pointing toward each other at the back of the head. If this doesn't put stress on the shoulder joints, you can stay here for a while, or you might decide that you wanna go front and back at the same time. I'm going to recommend if you modify and you do it this way, that you do left hand at the forehead instead of right. And there's a polarity reason for that because we do some things to enhance and assist 
the Reiki so that your polarity stays balanced because some people have a reversed polarity when they do Reiki. And I'll tell you my thoughts on why that is in an upcoming video, but we're here or here, okay? When we get to the third eye area and the eye sockets, I really like to warm up my hands and really connect this part of my palm with the eye. Oh, if you just take a little break to do this Reiki protocol when you've been working at a desk, if you've been writing or typing, oh, it's so lovely. And all the while I'm breathing, I'm connecting and setting my intention and I'm making sure whatever hand position I'm in isn't causing an obstruction of energy and causing pain or discomfort in my body and somewhere else. Constantly readjusting constantly and you're really going to carry that forward into when you're doing a treatment for someone else as we get into in our next six weeks module it's all about the comfort in your body the minute you've gotten constricted or tight the energy flow has stopped so keep that in mind and really work on that now as you're practicing on yourself do some more back here hmm I love the next one too. I like to really warm up my hands and give my TMJ jaw area a lot of love. And my hands are so long, I, I connect in with a lot of the area, but if you have small hands, you'll just have to do more hand positions to cover a particular area. I love to give my teeth and my gums Reiki energy. And once again, you can figure out like, where do you want to be? And of course you're going to have clean hands touching your face, but I really like to put my fingertips over, over the area because the mouth, the teeth, the tongue, the gums, that's an area that doesn't get a lot of energy work and it really, really needs it. So my favorite way to do this very important area the throat center and the neck. My very favorite way to do the throat is to put the heels of my hands together here. And this is just like a hug. This is so nurturing and comforting to me. You'll find some people will have a great deal of sensitivity at their throat and at their third eye. So you just have to modify. You have to modify with what feels good to you. If you want to encircle the entire chakra, there's no wrong way to do it if you're connecting in and feeling good and paying attention to all these areas. I just got one of those whew, full bodied feelings like right now as I was like connecting in here that this area of me, as much as I've been using it, is like, oh yeah, I really, I really want the support. So we're just doing this together, but remember, you're going to be able to take your time and go really, really slow once you see that all we're going to do is encircle with our hands and love on and connect with every joint, every body part, every energy center. That's all we're doing. And so here you may want to crisscross and you know, this is like a hug. This is like a hug. Taking time though, with each joint to connect, you're connecting chakra to chakra, your chakra to this joint which is an energy center, is a minor chakra. I like to do one at a time. And I need some more back here. This is where I'm just going to feel it and go for it. I could stay here all day. Now, when you get to the midline of the body, the traditional way is middle fingers together. Another thing you want to keep in mind, traditional hand placement with Reiki is to consolidate the energy. If you're like this, more of your energy is dispersing, but you really want to keep it 
connected and contained to the area that you're working on. So this is even really good for the soul seed, like we've talked about before, and not just for the heart chakra, the lungs, the breast tissue, the lymphatic tissue. Mm. Doing this in the shower is wonderful too. And when you are doing Reiki on a client or a loved one, we lift up over the breast tissue so that we're not touching the breast tissue, but please, by all means, when you do your self-healing practice, love those breasts. The breasts represent nurturing and nourishment in your life, energetically, metaphorically. And see, I'm going to, I'm always fine tuning and adjusting. I took it in because I don't want tension in the hand, but I do want a concentrated focus of energy. And I'm going to relax back so that you can see me as I take my time and travel down. Now I could do each arm, hand, fingers first, but I want to continue to go down the midline and then address the arms. Just taking it one hand position at a time all the way down through the major chakra centers and it feels so good. Why not do this every day? Ah, oh, like it's so, it's so easy and it's effective because I think we've become conditioned to that, that for it to be effective, it needs to be hard. Now, I promise you, if you do the Reiki self-healing protocol every day and you really take time with every area of your body and all you're doing is connecting in and saying, I love you. Hi, how are you? How are you doing today? So we've done this joint. I'm going to encircle the elbow. And so if I was really getting into it, I would, I would take a whole lot longer at every single one of these minor and major chakra areas. But for our purposes, I'm just giving you a visual. You can encircle the whole joint if your hand is big enough. Hmm. Man, it feels so good. And with the hands, now you can do, you can do work on every single joint in the fingers. You can just go palm chakra to palm chakra. Feel that heat. It's pretty amazing. Hmm. Now to the other side. Just saying I love you. Feels really, really good. <sighs> Taking more time with places that tell you that they need the help. So now how do we do the back body? If we're doing a Reiki self-healing treatment, you can go like crisscross like this to get like the scapula shoulder blade area. And then if you can, you can place hands at the low back. This one feels really, really good. If your kidneys and adrenals really need some extra love, but it doesn't feel good to connect in back there and you might not have the range of motion or mobility, you can always send, send the healing energy to the other side. And you can do that all the way down because the front and rear aspects of each chakra, I mean, they're going to be affected, like regardless of which side you're on of the body, you can go back there. I love to access front and back chakra areas if possible. And then you begin to do the same thing with, you can do the hip joints and you're just going to take time Take time to listen. What is going on in those hips? What's going on at the root? What does the root feel like? Encircling the hands around the knee joints. The knees do so much. And here's where I'm talking about you find what fits with the body part that you're on and the hand. Your hand positioning might not look like the traditional what's in the chart because you've got to find what works at the ankle, at the feet, definitely connecting your palm chakra 
to the chakra on the on the sole, the bottom of the feet. I really want you to um, pay attention to that high concentration of energy when your palm chakra meets the, the, the energy center in the sole of your foot. There's a wonderful circuitry connection that happens there. So enjoy it and please revisit this exercise often. Do it with me until you don't need to do it with me anymore, until you're taking your medical intuitive skills, you're putting it with Reiki hand positions and you're totally taking it to the next level.